Thank you. Uh, just to be very quick to leave uh, time for questions, I just first want to say that it's really an honor for me to be on the panel with Sahar Francis and with Shir. Uh, and it's a chance for me to say, to publicly thank Sahar and her uh, organization for the incredible work they do, because we as journalists and as activists uh, rely, rely on the work of ad -Damir especially, and other organizations. But I also want to, to mention uh, and to remember that, uh, that, uh, that among the prisoners in Israeli prisons are some of Sahar's colleagues, including Salah Hamouri, the Palestinian French uh, citizen and human rights worker, himself a former prisoner, who is under administrative detention. And uh, uh, thanks to the shameful silence and complicity of the French government, uh, his detention now has lasted for uh, almost a year. It'll be coming up to a year in August. And Shira, uh, uh, that was really hopeful research. I'm really looking forward to your book. I told you before that in writing my own book, I relied on your earlier research, so it's a great chance to, to uh, hear you. I want to add to these fantastic pre presentations just a couple of uh, comments. Um, when I wrote The Battle for Justice in Palestine, I think it was the first, uh, I have a chapter in it that I think was the first time that someone had explored in a, at least a book type expose the uh, massive uh, so-called police exchange programs between the United States and Israel. And basically, Israel lobby groups, and this includes all the big ones, uh, APAC through uh, an, a lobby, uh, uh, a uh, so-called educational arm they set up, the American Jewish Committee, the Anti-Defamation League, have a veritable conveyor belt of top police officials and so-called counterterrorism officials from the US being taken on delegations to Israel and being taken on all expenses paid junkets to, show, to showcase this horrific system, which includes everything from the administrative detention, the military courts, to this so-called high-tech surveillance, and to sell it to police chiefs as Israel's expertise. And this has included, for example, taking uh, delegations to Megiddo prison, where Palestinian prisoners are tortured. Arafat Jaradat was tortured to death in 2013 in Megiddo prison. Children are held in solitary confinement in Megiddo prison. And then these police chiefs come back to the US and they say, oh, everything I saw in Israel was fantastic. And we're going to implement uh, this here in the United States. And what's, what's truly uh, amazing is that this hasn't just been big cities, Chicago, where I live, which certainly has sent a number of police delegations to Israel, New York. The NYPD actually has a permanent office in Israel. They actually have a branch office in Israel. But it's small and medium-sized cities as well. So they're really working at multiple levels. And these delegations have uh, a number of goals. There is uh, the, uh, the, go the goal of selling. So th this is to showcase Israel's so-called homeland security uh, industry and turn these police forces or local governments or state governments or the US federal government into customers. But it also serves an ideological goal because it's about shoring up elite support for Israel at a time when grassroots support is, uh, is eroding. That's something I'll talk about in the next session. Uh, but this started to come to public attention in the United States. Uh, my book came out in 2014. I'm not giving, taking the credit for that public attention. I wish I could, uh, but the book sale numbers for books on Palestine don't uh, uh, justify that necessarily. Uh, but uh, certainly it came to consciousness and we started speaking about it at just the time when the Black Lives Matter 
movement uh, burst onto the scene after the police in Ferguson murdered uh, Michael Brown, a young uh, black, uh, a black teenager, and also after the killing of Trayvon Martin and, and so many others who, uh, you know, were victims of the systematic racism and institutional racism of American police, which uh, also coincided with the growing, and I will talk about this too in the next session, the growing uh, dissent among the younger generation, especially American, uh, young American Jews, about the American Jewish establishment organizations complicity with Israel's crimes. So this really became a point of organizing. And so you have a campaign that uh, uh, is being spearheaded by Jewish Voice for Peace called Deadly Exchange, which aims to end these police exchanges. And the first major victory that uh, came just in the past few weeks and is really fantastic is the city of Durham, North Carolina voted to end all police exchanges with foreign countries. I think the only one they're doing it with was Israel. So, uh, but this campaign was, was done at the grassroots level by a, a, a really impressive coalition of, of groups bringing together uh, Palestine solidarity activists, racial justice groups, people working against police violence and so on. Uh, and so that, that shows that this is really a viable political strategy. And this also came at the moment where the, the Anti-Defamation League, which markets itself in the US as a civil rights group, but is really an Israel lobby group that a, a generation ago was spying on uh, uh, anti-apartheid uh, uh, activists in the US, actually passing information on the anti-apartheid movement to the South African apartheid government. The ADL uh, markets itself as a civil rights organization, and so its role in this police exchanges has really made it a target for activism, and I think we're gonna be, see more successes in that campaign. Let me uh, just also point to the, I know less about the situation in Europe. I don't know the extent to which these sorts of police exchanges go on, but you ought to look into it uh, to find out. But one thing I can point to, and I'll say more about this as well, is the European Union complicity in uh, encouraging and supporting and whitewashing uh, Israel's uh, police and uh, so-called security forces. And one particular project I would highlight here is an EU-funded so-called research project that involves the Israeli police and a number of institutions in the European Union across a number of countries, including KU Leuven University in Belgium. And um, there was there a, a really, there's been a campaign going on for several years which scored an important victory in pushing back against this Israeli homeland security industry, this Israeli death industry that is marketing itself to the world. Uh, when uh, KU Leuven University's new rector announced that his university would no longer take part in this project, it's called Law Train, and it's about developing common interrogation techniques between Israel and uh, EU uh, uh, police forces. I mean, it's just horrific to think about. But uh, Luke Sells, the rector of uh, Leuven, made a, a, a clear statement, quite rare for a, a European figure in a position of power, where he said that the participation of the Israeli public security ministry indeed poses an ethical problem, taking into account the role which the strong arm of the Israeli government plays in enforcing an unlawful occupation of the Palestinian territories and the, associ uh, the associated repression of the Palestinian population. So it was a real victory for the activists, the academics in Belgium, who got their university to acknowledge that and to pull out of that, that uh, project. And that's another uh, sign of hope that we can push back 
against this massive Israeli arms industry, this death industry. Thank you.